Sunday Showcase, highlighting some of the best audio storytelling found anywhere. All right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. Hello and welcome to Bells in the Battery. I'm your genial host, John Bell. Some people have asked me what it is that I do when I'm not being a genial host. Yes, I do have a day job. I'm what they call in the business a voice actor. I record radio commercials as well as writing and producing them. I also record audiobooks, educational materials, perform in audio dramas, and voice long, boring corporate training projects. <sighs> Excuse me, just thinking about it. Only a few of those actually bring in money. Mostly the commercials and the boring stuff. Ergo, I am always looking for work. So today, instead of the silly stuff, to demonstrate what I can do as a serious voice actor, I'm going to read the first chapter of Homer's Odyssey. Let us begin. Tell me, O oh muse, of that ingenious hero who traveled far and wide after he had sacked the famous town of Troy. Many cities did he visit, and many were the nations with whose manners and customs he was acquainted. Moreover, he suffered much by sea while trying to save his own life and bring his men safely home. But do what he might, he could not save his men, for they perished through their own sheer folly in eating the cattle. Someone's coming down the elevator. Well, Miss Schmackelheimer will handle that. Uh, where was I? Uh, I was going to say safely home. I was going to save his men for very sheer folly in eating the cattle of the sun god Hyperion. So the god prevented them from Hello. ever reach. Hello. Yes. Hello. Over here. Hello. Hello. Uh, you really need to check in with my receptionist. Receptionist. Miss Schmackelheimer. Hackle Schmeimer and Mimer. The robot at the desk just outside the elevator. There's nobody at the desk. Nobody? Well, there is a little note sitting on the desk. And what does that note say? Out for tune up, lube. And foot rotation. Uh, okay, uh, look, I'm kind of in the middle of something, and I don't have a lot of time, but is there something I can do for you? Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I wanted to hire you, but I guess I'll oh. go somewhere. Oh, 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 no, I am wide open. My schedule is completely cleared. How can I help you? Oh, well, I have a story to tell. Well, you've certainly come to the right place. I'm your man. Let me give you the details. All right. It all starts with... Two cats. Once there were two cats. Yes, I just said that. And they showed up on my doorstep one day. Lonely cats, alone and starving, sought succor at a stranger's doorstep. Well, I can't attest to how lonely they were, but I don't think they were starving. Well, the dramatic power... And are you calling me a sucker for taking them in? No, 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 no. They were seeking succor. You mean like an all-day sucker? No, S-U-C-C-O-R. It means help, aid, assistance. Oh, it's sort of a weird word. Yes, but it's a perfectly cromulent word, so it's fine to use here. Oh, okay. Well, I suckered them in. I don't think that's a proper use of... And more of these cats showed up. Realizing the benevolence of this stranger, more cats arrived. Seeking succor? Sure, why not? And that's when I got accused of catnapping. The benevolent stranger dozed off at his desk. Huh? Not aware wait, that... Wait, wait, what do you mean I dozed off? Well, you said you were caught catnapping, so I assume that... No, no, no. I was accused of kidnapping... The cats. Can you kidnap a cat? Wouldn't you have to kidnap a baby goat? I don't have any baby goats. Just a lot of cats. Well, let's get down to it. How would you like this story expressed? Oh, yes, I need express service. I need this taken care of immediately. So you have a deadline for this story to come out? Well, I don't know about that, but I have to appear in court next week. In court? Yes, that's why I'm here. I need someone to defend me. So you're not looking for a voiceover artist? No, but I am looking for a mouthpiece. Are you not... Brad Montworth? Yes. No. Oh, I thought this was his address. Well, it is, actually. How did you get his address? On a business card somebody passed along to you? No, no, no. I was at a local watering hole. 
I had to use the restroom, and when I opened the booth, there scrawled on the... Right, right, I, I, I got the idea. Uh, if you can wait a moment, I will get Brad for you. I would appreciate that. Yeah, that remains to be seen. Yes, Mr. Bell, this is Brad Modworth. I'm very busy right now, so I probably can't take care of whatever you need. Brad, you have a client here. A uh, client? Someone who needs your services and will pay for them? Okay, uh, could you tell them that uh, cleaning gutters is $10 an hour? Brad. Tree removal is $20 an hour? They need a lawyer. They can't sue me yet. I haven't even started. They want to hire you as a lawyer, Brad. Really? Yes. Can you come to the studio, please? Uh, Mr. Bell, if this person is holding you at gunpoint, give me the secret word. <sighs> He's not holding me at gunpoint, and we don't have a secret word. Oh, yeah. The secret word is banana. Fine. So is there any fruit you would like me to bring you, Mr. Bell? No, just get in here, Brad. Right. I'm on my way. After a quick trip to the snack room, I'm suddenly hungry for some reason. All right, Brad will be here in just a few seconds. Well, I am looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. Because it's too difficult to look backward to anything. Mm-hmm. Although you can look back on memories, I suppose. Yes, I suppose you could. And you could look forward to looking back on memories, can't you? Yes, that is definitely possible. I wonder if I will look back on looking forward to looking back on my memories in the future. Gosh, I wonder what's keeping Brad. I'm looking forward to meeting... Let's not do that again. Hello, Mr. Bell. I have arrived. Thank heavens. Brad, this is Mr. Um... Hello, Mr. Um. I'm glad to meet you. I'm not Mr. Um. He's an imposter, Mr. Bell. Call the police. No, Brad, I just didn't know his name. I shall take care of that. What is your name, Mr. Um? No. How do you do, Mr. No? Say, you're not Dr. No by any chance, are you? I'm not a doctor. No wonder you need a lawyer practicing without a license. Don't point that banana at me. <gasps> Mr. Bell, he knows the secret word. Is there trouble brewing here? If there's coffee brewing, I'd like some of that. All right, all right, everybody, just stop. Sir, what is your name? Brad Modworth. You think you'd know that by now? Not name. you, Brad. I'm talking to our guest. Yes, that is correct. What's correct? My name, Arturo Guest. No, oh, Mr. Bell Guest. Sounds like you got it right, too. So, Mr. Guest, what is it that you need of Brad? Well, I have been accused oh, of... Hold on there, Mr. Guest. You can't talk to me in front of Mr. Bell. We have client-lawyer confidentiality. You and Mr. Bell? Uh, no, you and me, Mr. Guest. Brad, why don't you and Mr. Guest go talk in the conference room and I'll... If it's all the same to you, Mr. Bell, we'll stay right here and talk. You can go to the conference room. So you want to have a confidential conversation with your client... Yes. ...here in the studio... Yes. ...while the microphone... Phones are hot. We can turn on the air conditioner then. Fine, fine, fine. I'll just go to the conference room and you just let me know when you're done, or I'll just listen to the podcast and figure it out myself. How many doors does this studio have? Okay, Mr. Guest, tell me what it is you did that I can wiggle you out of. Well, actually, I didn't do it. Oh, yes, yes, of course. You didn't do it. <laughs> okay, what'd you do? Uh, these these two strange cats appeared on my doorstep. I couldn't find the owners, so I took them in. Cats, eh? I hear cats can make excellent fuzzy warm mittens. Actually, they can't make anything without opposable thumbs. Uh-huh. Except a mess out of your home. Should I assume that the owner discovered that you had these cats? Assume away. That is what happened. I had these two cats, as well as other cats that arrived after they showed up. Now I understand. Were there perhaps... One hundred and one cats? I didn't actually count them. I'd think a cat coat would be warm and stylish, eh? Mr. Montworth, this is not a movie plot. What I'm hearing here is you are giving me the complete movie rights. Look, I just want this settled and have my good name cleared. Well, I can clear the guest part of your name, but the Arturo, huh, that's going to be a little harder. How do you plan to exonerate me? Whoa, didn't plan on that, but I will make sure that you're declared not guilty. Then you are ready to go to court. Why, you got a sister? I'll be glad to court her as soon as this trial is over. Oye, oye, this court is now in session. Judge Ludlow Hingham presiding. All rise. Hey, you, get off the ceiling. But you told us to... Get back down on the ground. All right. 
Releasing helium. I call this court order. Everybody sit down. Sit down. Is the plaintiff ready? Your Honor, my client is ready, but I object to him being called a plaintiff. He is quite the special tiff, if you ask me. Thank you, thank you. I don't want any trouble from you. How about the defendant? The totally innocent defendant is ready, your honor. Well, let's get this hot dog in the bun. Somebody question somebody. Your honor, I call my client to the stand. Well, get him up here. He ain't got all day. You swear down to the altar. That's one thing you're going to get. Say, huh? Huh? Be seated. So, will you please state your name? Arnie Kinspard. Arnie, I object. On what grounds? These very grounds upon which I stand. You yeah, overruled. The plaintiff's name will remain Arnie Gunspider, whatever the heck it was. Mr. Gunspard, can you tell us exactly what happened to your cats on the day in question? Yeah, I can do that, but they're not cats. <laughs> they're cowlets. We just a ding dong hangle bango minute. What in the world is a cowlet? Cowlets are tiny little cows that were introduced back in Belgium about three episodes. Number five, we. Back in 2005. Your Honor, I submit this Wikipedia page here on Bells and the Battery to confirm what Mr. Cunchpod just expostulated. Well, you gotta believe what you see on the internet. Continue. Continue, Mr. Cunchpod. Well, it was me and two of my cowlets, Jeannie and Cynthia, and we were just relaxing and taking it easy. I don't know if I can go on. I know that you are upset. And you are very sad because of what that individual did to your cowlets. I obviously object. Sit down. Continue, please. Yes, tell us your harrowing tale. As I recall, it went like this. We were in the house, just watching TV. Then those cowlets, they looked at me. They wanted to go out. I tell no lies. They both needed to go and make cow pies. I opened the door, let them out with a smile. Then I returned to Gilligan's Isle. By the time the skipper gave Gilligan a smack, I realized my cowlets had not come back. Oh, 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 where, oh, where could my cowlets be? The guy over there took them away from me. And I'll do whatever I gotta do so I can again hear my cow. Let's move. Oh, that is indeed a sad, sad story. And then later, where did you see your cowlets? I was driving around desperately looking for them, and I saw them at the guest house. They were in your guest house all along? My client is referring to the house of Mr. Guest. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Never mind, sorry. I have no further questions for this witness. Mr. Mindworthy, do you want to cross-examine? Yes, Your Honor, I'm cross enough to do that. But first, can we kill that music? It's kind of influencing the jury. Kill the music? Now begin your cross-examination. Alrighty, I'll cross over to where he is. <laughs> Mr. Kunkspard. Yes? How are you doing, Arnie? Pretty good, considering. Say, are you going bowling with us Saturday night? Oh, yeah. Can you bring the chips? Sure, I can do that. Cool. No further questions, Your Honor. Yeah, all right, who wants to pester the next witness? Oh, I, I do, like I do, oh, oh, me. Oh. I heard Mr. Martworth first. Who you gonna call? What was that? Yeah, I said, who you gonna call? <laughs> no, no, stop, stop. We're not doing that joke. It's too obvious, even for this show. Oh, cowpie. All right, I call Mr. Guest to the stand. I'd rather sit, if that's all right. This episode is exhausting. Mr. Guest, were you at home when these cowlets showed up at your house, unannounced? No, I had just returned home. In your personal vehicle, I assume? Yes. And what sort of vehicle is that? Well, it's a uh, panel truck, a, a windowless van, if you will. <laughs> you drive around in a windowless van? <laughs> that doesn't look very good for you, does it? <laughs> I mean, this is the kind of van where you can stop and grab cowlets and throw them in and nobody would ever know. <laughs>
Your Honor, may I fire my lawyer and represent myself? Henceforth. Hmm. Well, well, I completely understand why you'd want to do that. Remember the old saying, whoever represents themselves has a fool for a lawyer. Well, the way I see it, Your Honor, I already have a fool for a lawyer, so at worst, this would be a lateral move. Oh, come on, give me another chance. All right, all right. Perhaps if you were to Ask me what I usually carry in my van. Oh, okay, if you think that'll help. What do you usually carry? I object, Your Honor. The witness is leading counsel. I'll allow it. Anything to get this done. Yes, yes, so what do you carry in this windowless van? I carry hay. Hay? You haul hay? That's what I say all the live long day. Pray tell, why do you haul hay? I use the hay to weave baskets. I'm a wicker weaver. A wicker weaver? Well, I'm a believer. Yes, I weave wicker for the Little Wicker Basket Company, as heard in comedy forecasts. Hey, no plugging other podcasts, pal. You might ask, how do I get the hay into the house? I might. I think it would help. Alrighty. How do you get the hay you haul into the house? I haul the hay into the house by the handful. You mean you just grab up a bunch of it and take it into the house? Yes. And quite a bit of it falls out of my hands on the way in. Well, that's kind of messy, isn't it? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is it possible that my cowlicks were wandering around, smelled your hay, and started eating it, following it up to your front porch? Oh, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Because that would mean you're totally innocent. Yes, yes, you're innocent. I've done it again. In that case... This case is dismissed. Mr. Guest, about my fee. Here, have a little wicker basket. Mr. Guest, I want to apologize for jumping to conclusions in a And I don't know what you said, but it sounded sincere, so thank you. Actually, I miss having the little cowlets around the house. Anybody want my card? I'm available. Up until recently, I never even heard of cowlets, and suddenly I had a dozen of them in my home. Oh, I have even more cowlets than that. And I'm sure they would love to come to your house sometime. Matter of fact, they're out in the hall right now. That's Brad Montworth, winning attorney at law. Oh, that would be delightful. M O N T. Uh, wait. M. Bring the little creatures in so I can meet them. Come on in, girls! Oh, my. This is Marcia and Becky and Dale and this is Lily and Deanna and Callie and Joanne and Rose and Lee. You've been listening to Bells in the Battery, episode 306, copyright 2023 by John Bell Creative, LLC. and Daisy. Record a message. Is this thing on? This is Homer. I want to find out how my Odyssey wound up. Let me know. Marge, get me a bit. You can listen to classical and brand new audio dramas through the Mutual Audio Network. Subscribe through Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, or iHeartRadio today. There's eight different podcasts, one for each day of the week and genre and the Mutual Audio Network broadcast feed so you don't miss a day of your favorite shows. Subscribe to Mutual Audio tonight. Good night!